Good morning and uh, welcome to this webinar which is focusing on a uh, project that was run by uh, Scotland's Housing Network for the Northern Ireland's Homelessness and Housing Options Hub over the course of 2019. Uh, my name is Tim Pogson and uh, I was responsible for managing the project with the hub and with the organisations that uh, participated in the project uh, and I'd like to go through the, the outcomes of that project with you just now and also to talk briefly about some of the lessons that came out of the project. Um, so I'm sure that you're all aware that a Section 11 notice is something that um, must be served to a local authority by a uh, private landlord or a housing association landlord or a mortgage company um, in the event that they're starting legal action to uh, to repossess the property to give the local authority the chance to um, prevent uh, support the the tenant or the homeowner to, to stop that happening uh, and we worked with uh, a number of housing associations in the northern islands hub area to look at practices around the serving of section 11 notices and see if we could uh, improve performance on uh, homeless prevention in relation to uh, housing association repossessions. And the aspects of performance we were looking at were around the timing of the serving of the notice, which is uh, by law required to be served when court action is started. Uh, but we thought it might be helpful to serve notice earlier in the process. Uh, looking at the information that is shared between the housing association and the local authority um, housing options team, looking at working jointly uh, between housing association landlords and local authorities to, uh, to try and prevent repossession, to prevent homelessness, and also recognising that with the best within the world, um, some evictions will end up going ahead. Uh, and for those households who are evicted, they um, may well go to the local authority as homeless and may apply for assistance um, and, and may consequently require rehousing, either temporary or permanent. So we wanted to make that process as smooth as possible and as, as positive an outcome as possible for that household. So we were conscious of that aspect of, um, of performance as well. So these were the organisations that uh, participated in the project. There were four local authorities, uh, Aberdeen City Council, Highland Council, Shetland Highlands Council and Comair and Alien Sierra. Apologies for pronunciation on that. Uh, that is the local authority for the West Niles. And then there were seven local authority uh, partners as well. There were Langstein and Grampian that worked with Aberdeen City Council, Loch Arbor, Cairn and Albin housing associations that worked with Highland, um, Hebridean Housing Partnership that worked with um, uh, Kamel and Alien CR. They are the stock transfer authority there. And finally, Yaltland Housing Association worked with Shetland. So they were the uh, 11 organisations that were involved in the project and uh, obviously very grateful to them and their staff teams for giving up the time to, uh, to engage in this. What happened in practice during the course of the project was that uh, differing, different organisations participated in the project to different degrees. Um, and in fairness, Aberdeen City Council participated least uh, and probably really uh, never fully got engaged with the project. Um, so therefore their partners, Grampian and Langstein Housing Association, were not able to fully engage in the project. Um, Highland Council were working in uh, two different regions. They were working in Loch Arbor area around Fort William with Loch Arbor Housing Association, and also um, further north around Inverness, Murray Firth, and, and further north again And that. They were working with Albin and with Cairn Housing Association. Um, and again, that team working in the north of Highland area, they uh, struggled to engage uh, with the project fully 
um, and it took them a while to get on board with the project. The main, the, the reason why some organisations struggle to engage is very important, and that is because there needs to be a, a decision, a commitment to put the resource to homeless prevention. You know, local authorities are dealing with homeless applicants on a daily basis, um, and, 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 and those obviously must take priority. They are the, um, you know, there is a statutory responsibility there. So finding the resource and dedicating the resource to preventing homelessness before it gets to those crisis applications is a challenge. And um, Aberdeen City at that time were going through uh, restructures and various other things. And, uh, you know, they had to, uh, in the end, say, look, you know, we, we're not able to fully engage here. Um, and similarly with Highland staff teams that were working with Alban and PM, they were struggling with resourcing issues. So um, I have to say the other three areas, La Carba, uh, Comel and Aliencia and Shetland, uh, all engaged with the project sort of fully and, and wholly. So what this ended up was giving us three different experiences in the project of one where uh, they weren't able to engage at all. That was Aberdeen, of course. One there where they were engaging to a degree, that was uh, Highland working with Alban and KM, and one where they were engaging, uh, three areas, I should say, where they were engaging fully with the project. And so we can see how this affected performance. Uh, just one other thing to mention here, briefly. Uh, you'll see there that Cairn Housing Association uh, weren't involved in the project uh, right from the outset, but that was for a very good reason. That was because they wanted to satisfy themselves that they could share the information that we were talking about with uh, their local authority partner without being in breach of GDPR. Um, and so they had discussions with their solicitors and, and legal teams and eventually established that you know that it, it, it was uh, okay to share this data. It was helping uh, the local authorities to do their job to prevent homelessness. So that was the the justification for the sharing of the uh, information. And they issued a revised privacy notice to their tenants to 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 cover themselves on that. So that took them a little time, and that's why they um, weren't um, engaged in the project until later on. Um, and uh, but that was a very valuable contribution to to have that uh, assurance around the the sort of GDPR and data sharing issues. So the way that we evaluated the project was to look at the uh, raw performance data around evictions uh, during the time of the project, and the other way we looked at it was by evaluating staff experiences of of delivering the project, uh, and we held two workshops with staff in Highland, uh, one in Fort William, one in, in Venice, and we also engaged with other staff through surveys uh, and got their feedback that way. In terms of the performance data, which I'll go on to look at now, it is a difficult area to assess. Um, the two things we were able to look at was the Section 11 notices that had progressed through to eviction during the time of the project. Um, and I accept that um, you know, we, we had a cutoff date, which was during December last year, uh, and, and there the, 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 the may well have been other evictions since then, but we, we, we are just assessing the data during the period of the project. And the other thing we can look at is comparing last year's performance, 2019, with the equivalent uh, data for 2018 when we weren't running the project. Um, so to see how, um, uh, you know, whether it made a difference or not. So, so looking at the project, this is um, the uh, percentage of the Section 11 notices served during the course of the project that ended in eviction. So as you can see, there were 131 notices served in total during the course of the project. Those numbers vary a lot from organisation to organisation, as you can see. That depends on stock size. It also depends on the degree of engagement uh, because we were encouraging serving the Section 11 at the same time that notice was served to the tenant. Uh, notice seeking possession was served to the tenant. So that was much earlier in the process than is the statutory requirement. Um, and organisations like um, Hebridean Housing Partnership and Hialtland 
uh, were able to to do that in full. Um, Albin and Cairn were not, and they served notice, stuck to the statutory requirement to serve notice when they started the court action. And Lock Arbor adopted a hybrid approach where they sort of did a bit of risk assessment on their tenants. And those that had come through the homelessness route, where they might need a bit more support, they served the notice earlier uh, if they were taking legal action against those tenants. But tenants who'd come through the, the, the normal housing list routes, um, they adopted the statutory time scales with them. So it's a sort of a hybrid approach. And on the graph, you can see that reflected in the outcomes uh, that Langstein, that you'll remember, was not able to engage in the project at all. Um, they had the uh, least good performance, uh, where 21% of their um, notices, Section 11s, ended up being evicted. But you'll also notice that uh, in Hebridean Housing Partnership, Buck Harbour and Hyaltland, they had zero evictions. Um, so, of, you know, that, that is, is what, what we would expect. Um, the one anomaly there is, is Grampian, um, but you'll see that their notices served were very small indeed, just three. Um, so, um, but um, none of those ended up in eviction. So overall, during the course of the project, overall, uh, homelessness was, was prevented in 96% of cases. Uh, if we take the Aberdeen data out of that, because, you know, they were really engaging in the project in practice, then that figure goes up to 98%. Uh, only um, um, five notices ended in... Um, Sorry, only two notices ended in eviction um, throughout the project out with the Aberdeen area. So that would be uh, take us up to 98%. And the other uh, note which is on there is from Section 11 notices that we collected data on in Scotland's Housing Network in 2018-19, noting that um, homelessness had been prevented in only 24% of Section 11s during that time. Uh, so we were recording at, at least 96, 98%. Um, that 24% is across all sectors, private landlords, uh, mortgage companies and housing associations. So they're not exactly, they're not the same, but it uh, gives us an indication. Looking at that same data from a local authority point of view, we can see exactly what we would expect to see that Aberdeen was, was um, was experiencing evictions. They had uh, three evictions there um, during the course of the project. They weren't able to engage, as we know. Highland ended a mess where they were engaging to a degree. Um, they had two uh, evictions there. And in the other local authority areas, there were, there were no evictions where they were able to engage fully. Uh, there were no evictions. So that's looking at the Section 11 notices that were served during the course of the project. If we turn our attention to looking at uh, comparing evictions during the project period with the previous year in 2018, uh, this graph shows the change in uh, evictions uh, from one year to the next. Um, and again, we can see that the best performance here uh, was amongst those organisations that um, were able to fully engage in the project. So Hebridean Housing Partnership, Cairn, Keltland, Albin, all reduced their evictions during last year. On the previous year, Langstein and Grampian, um, they experienced um, evictions, more evictions uh, during 2019 than they had the previous year. Again, the anomaly here is, is uh, Lock Arbor. Um, who did experience two evictions. I should say that these are all evictions, not just those related to the Section 11 notices. Um, but you can see there the reductions uh, that were experienced by those um, organisations that were able to adopt the project practices of earlier intervention and sharing information and so forth. And lastly, in terms of data, we'll just look at that again from a local authority perspective. Um, and it shows us exactly the uh, what we would expect where organisations were adopting project practice. There were no evictions in 
Western Isles and non in Shetland during the course of the project. Um, and redu and um, evictions were reduced in Highland, uh, where they were able to um, engage partly. And in Aberdeen, there was an increase in evictions. There was no reduction. There was actually an increase. So again, uh, we can say that the overall decrease in evictions was uh, 31%. That includes Aberdeen. If we take Aberdeen out of that uh, calculation, um, the number of evictions actually decreased um, by 69% across the other three local authority areas. So again, uh, that sort of bears out the fact that the focus we had on um, prevention and on sexual practices, I, I think that shows that it uh, produced some good results. So what we were looking at um, specifically uh, was around timing of the serving of the notice, and we were looking at it being served at the same time as notice seeking possession. Uh, this is more work for the local authority, it is more work for the housing association, but from a local authority, if they are avoiding a crisis homelessness application from a household, that uh, justifies that uh, additional resource. And from the Housing Association point of view, um, you know, if, if they are saving court costs, maintaining rental income, uh, etc., then uh, you know it's a good outcome for the Housing Association well, as well. We were looking at uh, sharing better information, uh, and I'll go on to that in, in, in just a moment. Um, we were looking at the um, Housing Association and the local authority carrying out joint activities to, pro to try to prevent homelessness sending joint letters, meeting with the tenant jointly so that they could explain uh, the consequences of, of, of not paying your rent uh, or indeed um, you know, breaching your tenancy in other ways. Um, and the local authority officer could explain what the, the genuine outcome of that might be in terms of a homeless application, chances of securing the appropriate accommodation in the appropriate area, length of stay in temporary accommodation, that sort of thing, to have that kind of joint conversation about options in the event of uh, the tenant losing their current home. And the other aspect of this was keeping uh, local authority and housing association, keeping each other informed after having served the notice uh, about their each of their actions towards um, preventing homelessness and uh, sustaining the tenancy so that each was aware of the other's actions uh, and working together on this. So in terms of the uh, information shared, this is the information that is required to be shared uh, statutorily. Um, very, very bare indeed. It is the contact details of the landlord and their solicitor, the name of the tenant and the address, and that's it. Um, so it's very, very, very basic information indeed. What our project participants agreed would be good to share amongst, and, and they developed a um, form for doing this and, uh, and, and, and did share this information, was much more focused around what, what is going to benefit the local authority in contacting their tenants and supporting them and engaging with them to try and resolve the homelessness. Um, so, you know, looking at actual contact details, not just the address, um, um, contact details within the housing association, composition of the household, whether they're in work or not, um, vulnerabilities, so where there might be uh, support needs within the household, uh, or indeed um, areas of risk to the local authority if they're approaching the, the tenant. Um, uh, why possession is being sought, that would obviously be um, arrears or, or antisocial behaviour uh, generally, uh, and, and what it is that the housing association would require, so what level of payment arrangement or they would require in order to suspend legal proceedings. In addition to that, uh, subsequent to the project, staff also identified that it would be good to know as part of this information sharing what degree of engagement there had been between the tenant and the landlord, um, whether housing support was being delivered uh, and by whom, and also copies of letters that had gone between the housing association and the tenant uh, around the repossession. Um, and, you know, there was an agreement that, uh, you know, that this, this would be useful and, and essentially could be shared. 
So um, the full project write-up is now available on the um, Scotland's Housing Network website. Um, and uh, this webinar will be available there as well. We're also working with SFHA to uh, develop some guidance, which hopefully will be out very soon. And um, this is very, very briefly just go through the uh, lessons that um, that have been um, uh, learned around that. And uh, one is, as we've said, to um, intervene earlier in the process. Uh, one is to share more information and more useful information, as we saw just then. Ensure communications between named contacts. It often essentially goes to a kind of generic um, email account. Much better if named offices know each other and they're able to talk about the case and follow up uh, on the, these cases. Um, so actually, you know, have a named individual uh, that, that can be approached about Section 11 issues on both sides. Uh, act jointly around your letters. Uh, don't just send a standard letter. I think um, it, it isn't clear what, what, if anything, local authorities may or may not do in, 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 in response to a Section 11. I think very often the response might be just to send a standard letter. Um, and that is probably not the best use of what resource there is there. You know, you could probably do something more uh, person-centred, more, more tailored, to that household, to the individual uh, that, that might have a chance of them engaging more um, and having a successful outcome than just sending a standard letter. Keep each other informed uh, after serving the sexual level notice. Involve other agencies. If, if a household uh, is struggling to pay their rent or, or struggling with um, you know, um, antisocial behaviour breaches, then you know there's a fair chance that other agencies may be involved with that household or perhaps ought to be involved um, and, and, and that is something that ought to be part of the consideration as to who else um, should be involved or could be involved in, in seeking to uh, maintain this tenancy and prevent homelessness. Um, in the housing associations and the local authorities involved in the project found it useful to regularly um, review activities around Section 11, so that could be a sort of specific case review, or it could be a um, more general review, looking at, at how these uh, cases have been approached. Um, and, you know, the frequency of that would depend on how many notices would be served. You know, it, it might be weekly, monthly, whatever, whatever suits the organisation best. And the final uh, comment there is really uh, in relation to the experience that uh, we had with, uh, you know, for example, Aberdeen City, and I, I, I totally understand the situation that uh, organisations are in, very, very highly pressured, um, and it is very difficult to sort of carve out that resource and to make it available for prevention when there is, uh, you know, a statutory demand sat there on your doorstep, uh, metaphorically and, and literally. Uh, so I think, you know, it, it has to be a, a strategic leadership commitment of the organisation to commit resources to prevention um, and, and get upstream of those crisis applications coming into the reception area and uh, and then going on to require temporary accommodation and support and, you know, all the rest of it, which is very expensive and uh, um, resource intensive. So uh, th those are the kind of uh, learning. As I say, we'll be publishing guidance with SFHA over the next few weeks to get these uh, messages out uh, across the sector. The last comment I would make before I close is that uh, I'm recording this webinar, well, webinar at the very end of May. Um, we've just been through this uh, pandemic. Um, and as we come out of this period, um, I think most of us are anticipating that will be a, an increase in homelessness. Uh, and, and I know that, you know, we should be focusing towards prevention uh, in relation to that homelessness as much as possible. Evictions are currently suspended for six months by the emergency measures, at, at least that may, may or may not get extended. Uh, but th there is going to be, uh, those evictions will come through the system at some point or another. So having an awareness of practices around prevention um, and around these Section 11 notices, I think 
could be even more critical uh, just now than it would be under normal times uh, as we come out of this pandemic and um, and uh, you know whilst we're not in normal times so uh, I'll close there um, thank you very much for listening and I hope you found it useful please uh, contact me Tim Pogson at Scotland's House Network if you have any questions or any thoughts or um, responses at all I'm happy to help with any uh, comments and there's an email address a generic email address which which I can be contacted um, but as I say very very happy to to hear from anybody uh, and, and finally I'll just say a uh, a, a big thank you to all those organisations, the four local authorities, seven housing associations uh, that participated in this project and, and made it all possible. So uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, I will close. Thanks very much.